Welcome to Family Goals with David Pollock and Pastor Jay. This is our first. I like how you say Pastor Jay. How'd you get that nickname? Well, you're actually the one who thank you who Thank gave you. me the nickname. Appreciate it. And uh, by the way, nicknames are crucial to remembering names. That's just, anyways. That's just. I always have to make a nickname for somebody so I can remember it. Otherwise, I don't remember names very well. What is your nickname? I got a lot, but I mean, DP Pollock, Davy. Yeah, I love you. Still call me Davy. Most people, most people that don't know me real well, call me David. That's a separate separate topic for another day. But every time anybody goes, hey. Uh, I was good friends with David when we were younger. Like yeah, it was, it was Davy. So yeah. we weren't, we weren't really good friends. But I was actually Johnny. John, I can see yeah. that little Johnny. Little Johnny. That and was some a, people still call me years ago. But yeah, I like Pastor Jay better. Pastor Jay is way, way so, more gangster. So this is our first podcast. First one. So we're kind of, we're kind of new to the game here. You've probably been on podcast. Have you been on like? We do. A them, bunch of I people. do one weekly with uh, with ESPN for college football, but this will be obviously totally different. But I listen to them religiously, just like a lot of people, just to learn and grow and listen to stories, all yeah. kinds of stuff. Well, this is this is like our podcast. We're gonna do what we want. We're gonna do this is ours. Whatever That's we right. want. So we're gonna talk about God because we're Christians. Yep. And uh, obviously, I'm a Christian since I'm. Pastor, pastor? <laughs> you pastor the church, you got to be a Christian. <laughs> That's weird. So we're talking about God. We want to help people grow spiritually, yep. help people grow in their faith. We're going to talk about family. Yep. Super passionate about family, marriages, parenting, anything to do with. And then we started with this, family. We, we did a we did a message on Father's Day, um, me and you, and we asked questions and we went back and forth and. And then we just talk later about family goals and like setting, how do we set family goals and how do we hold our kids accountable? How do we, a lot of times we like, and me and you've talked about this in the past a lot. We want to grow our family. We want our family spiritually to grow, but we don't, I don't know how to do that. So we're going to talk about ways that we can help mm-hmm. you do that and ways that you can sit down with your kids and have conversations that hopefully will help you grow in all those areas. It's interesting because we set goals in other areas of our lives. Yep. I'm sure you have a few yep. weight weight room goals or look like you've put on a little weight. <laughs> put on a few LBs. <laughs> the quarantine was good. Like the quarantine with me and Rollins and Mashburn next door uh-huh. and a couple of buddies, we basically worked out every day. Like everybody was locked down. So we would like work out in the mornings and then afternoon, hey, I'm bored. Anybody want to do anything? We work out in the afternoon. Yeah. It was a weight gain season. It was definitely yeah. a get thicker season. I'm sure season. yours is a healthy weight. Ah, uh, the fine. I mean, when you get the older you get, the less you need weight. So trying to get trying to get some off all the time. But anyway, uh, goals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we set goals for working out and our weight. We set goals in our careers. We set financial goals, but setting family goals. A lot of a lot of people don't think about setting goals for their family, setting goals for their marriage, setting goals for their kids. But I think one of the big things you've been doing is having your kids. Set, set their goals. goals. Yeah. So what's the philosophy behind allowing your kids to set goals? Well, I think it, it's it's accountability, right? Like I can make a goal for them, but it's not their goal. But sitting down with with Nicholas specifically, who's actually just turned 13 the other day. So he's a teenager now. I forget that sometimes. But it's just, it's his goals. Like, what, buddy, what do you want to accomplish from a standpoint of school? Like Nicholas said, he wanted straight A's. Okay. So that's a goal. We can hold each other accountable. Like, are you studying? Did you study for your test? But it's not me nagging you. Like he wanted to get bigger, faster, stronger. Well, what do you have to do to do that? You got to work out, right? You got to lift weights. We're not going to lift heavy weights because you're not old enough for that yet. And that might be another story for another day if I'm allowed to tell that story, another story Mm -hmm. about, you know, puberty and stuff like that. But, um, so we set, we set goals about what he wanted to accomplish. Basketball. He loves basketball. I'm going to shoot 200 shots a day. I'm like, dude, you don't need to shoot 200 shots a day, seven days a week. Like you're, you'll be okay if you do that three or four days a week, but helping them come up with goals that then they can execute and they take ownership of like, and I don't have to be the dad that goes, you know, you need to go out and shoot. Now I say, Hey, Nicholas, have you been shooting? That was one of your goals. Have you been shooting? You know, um, spiritual goals for Nicholas, whether it be praying before meals, um, doing his devotional in the morning. I'll just ask him, Hey buddy, have you done your devotional? Did you do your devotional this morning? And I'm not nagging, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's it's something that we've come up with together. And we talk a lot about, in our family, we talk a lot about accountability and mm-hmm. because I need it. I need it severely. Texting and driving, do it. Guilty, charged, officer, arrest me. Give me a ticket, like <laughs> I'm guilty. Well, I told my kids all the time, like when I grew up, back in my day, back in my day, you could text and drive, it wasn't against the law. 
So what I tell uh, Nicholas and Lee, if you see me touch my phone, tell me, don't text and drive. So they'll take my phone in the car. Don't text and drive. Accountability. Like mm-hmm. I, they, I need it from them and they need it from me. And I think it works best when we can tell them and talk to them like, hey, I'm looking for your accountability. They'll look at me and say the same thing. Like, hey, I want you to hold me accountable in this area. Like I want to do X, Y, and Z. So I think it's helping develop that throughout life, mm-hmm. which we're all going to need throughout life. We still need it. How old are you? 52. 52. Like, <laughs> I'm almost 40. I'm getting closer to closer to 40. I'm 39. Like, I still need it on a daily basis. I need accountability. Yeah. So I they definitely that, need it too. I think it's cool that it's a two-way street. You're holding them accountable, but they're also, they're also holding you accountable. And they're the ones setting the goals. So you're not, like you were saying, you're not nagging them to do something that you want them to do. No. This is what they want to do. And so you're just holding them accountable to do. And find out what's important know. to them. Because, like, I learned a long time ago, what's important to me ain't important to them. Like, Mm -hmm. my kids aren't going to be me. They're going to be – and they're uniquely different. Trust me. Like, I got Leah, who's personality-driven, all over the world, loves everybody, will look you right in the eyes. Woohoo! Life's awesome no matter what. She can do anything. Like, Leah, watch this dunk. I'm going to dunk the basketball. Watch this. I can do that. I mean – delusional nicholas would be like no i can't do that's dumb like Mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense so one doesn't have as much confidence one has all the confidence in the world where i gotta meet them at different spots i gotta help them in different areas so yeah 100 percent. like not every not one kid is the same Mm -hmm. so and they're dang sure not the same as you like i think youth league sports is an area that we'll dive into that i think is super needed super necessary like all the stuff that i've failed on miserably the last several years hopefully will help somebody else not fail Mm -hmm. on well i think helping the kids determine what their dream in life is and not what your dream for them is and and they have different gifts different abilities different temperaments we were, we were watching the Olympics. I don't know if you guys oh, yeah. got into uh, watching the Olympics, but I've always thought, you know, and I, and I always joke around that I'm a professional athlete in the past, in a pastor's body. Apparently, you did something to Brett Favre a long time ago, yeah, too, right? Yeah, that, I've, I've kind of known for that. Youth League. Um, we got to tell the story now. I mean, well, South Mississippi, Little League All Stars, 12 years old. Yep. Struck down Brett Favre. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the, fact. Uh, <laughs> it's in the record book. I like, mean, it is fact. It there's is a, fact. There's a few people what, trying. What pitch did you strike him out on? Curveball. My, curve arms, my arm still hurts. You should not be throwing curveballs at age 12, but okay. that's a, you know. Favre couldn't they, handle they it. They know those I'm things I'm not surprised now. Favre couldn't hit the curve. All right, continue. Yeah. Continue on. There's a few people trying to orchestrate re- a reenactment of this, so we'll. Let's <laughs> we'll, <laughs> make it happen again. We'll see if it happens. But I've always thought. Surely I could have made the Olympics in something. And I've always had this dream, and, and you mentioned how old I am. I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe I'm a little bit too old to, to be an Olympic athlete. But No, you are. There is no kind could of. I, could I throw the hammer, like the hammer toss? No. Have you ever seen that? Mm-hmm. I thought it was an actual hammer. <laughs> no, it's not. It is not. And no, you have no shot. Yeah, so. Unless you ate 75,000 calories a day. No, you still, you don't have a shot. No, no. Yeah, well, my my strengths are more in hand-eye coordination. Yes. <laughs> Pastor Jay, Pastor Jay, I'm telling you, if the body would move a little faster, you could still contribute to the basketball team. I mean, he can shoot it. And And by the way, He's going to pull the trigger. Like this guy, <laughs> you can tell him, Pastor Jay, I'm going to make a $20,000 donation to the church if you don't shoot for the whole game. I don't think you could do it. Well. Could you? Everyone knows. Could the, you do it? I, I could not do no, it. No, because if he's open, yeah. if he's not open, he's open. I've, Every shot, it's going in. I've never met a shot I didn't like. No. And by I, the way, like championship. Um, or championship game a couple years ago, you hit the three to send us into OT put it on the back, hit the back of the rim and sat there for a second and rolled in. You tied the game and we would not have been the best church league basketball team in the nation, in the universe. Yeah, in the universe. universe is what you like to say. Yeah. If you wouldn't hit that shot, by the way, that was clutch. I'd forgotten about that. It was but a big I'm, shot. I'm glad you brought purple it up. Purple shoes. You had nice purple <laughs> shoes on. You got those at LSU for me. LSU fan. Yeah, I still have those shoes. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, this is a little bit of a sore subject that Pastor Jay has been asked to retire from the church basketball team. I mean, it shouldn't be that sore because you kind of voluntarily retired, necessarily retired. So. Well, I, I had knee surgery. Well, I mean, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> League wasn't getting any younger. You weren't getting any yeah. younger. 
I've had some other churches reach out to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not lie. Um, yeah. So anyway, back to Jesse, my 13-year-old. I have a 13-year-old myself, and uh, we're trying to find her sport. You know, she she's not very competitive. And uh, Jolyn like took her, her – Define that, like at all, anything, like, board games? Like, yeah, she – well, mainly in sports. Like, she she just rather play and have fun. But if we start what? keeping score and all that – She's not she, interested. Yeah, yeah. So – but the other day, Jolyn, our son, took her out and played disc golf. Oh, and, okay. and apparently, when you say Jolyn, she's like a natural. And, she slung uh, it. Yeah, she made a 100-yard 100, 100 shot. In? Yeah, in the drained in, it. Yeah, drained it. That's pretty first outstanding. First time ever to play. Okay. And so then she then she asked me. She said, "Well, are you going to make me play disc golf?" And I'm like, "No, I'm not going to make you play disc golf. I'm not going to make you do anything you don't want to do. But if you want to play disc golf, I'll support you." And then she says, "Well, you think it'll be an Olympic sport one day?" <laughs> Dude, the way <laughs> things are going, you never know. So uh, I mean, skateboarding, yeah. like all the stuff they had, you. You don't know. That could be an Olympic sport one day. I yeah. mean, they add all kinds of stuff. But the Olympics makes it a lot of fun. We huddle around the TV a lot. And so it's I, I like it because, you know, I played football and people always watch football. And people watch basketball and people watch baseball. But there's a lot of people that have been dedicating their whole life to something and they get to get recognized for it. I kind of like that. I enjoy, I I enjoy that component of it. More so the older I've gotten than when I was younger. But if you wrap an American flag in anything, I'm in. I'm watching. I'm with you. Yeah. I we we definitely got into the gymnastics and yeah, all Simone of that Biles. Stuff, so we're not going to go there the first day. <laughs> so um, <laughs> family goals. Yeah, we're going to be here to help add value to people's lives, to help people be better parents, to help help families be stronger, healthier, uh, better families. On our next episode, we're we're going to talk about the high calling of being a parent. I think it's one of the greatest callings in the world. The responsibility of being a parent and i think every parent can relate to that that freak out moment and i remember having this freak out moment we're going to talk about the next episode uh but when we brought our son home for the first time and we sat him down it's like now what <laughs> like, like we are responsible for the that, well-being of this human being what, what are you doing what is he doing he's just sitting there yeah okay so it, it was crazy but appreciate you guys joining us for episode one of Family Goals with David Pollock and Pastor Jay, and hope you'll join us next week.